Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we will be talking about Ansible roles. So Ansible roles is actually kind of a neat thing to kind of, it, it can be kind of confusing if you kind of like just start reading into it and you're like, what am I supposed to do with these roles? And there are probably a, definitely a ton of ways to actually utilize roles. Um, but I'm going to just use more of a simple case for you guys to kind of understand how I kind of use it in my environment. So say for example, you want you want to have a playbook that sets up a web server and you have like another playbook that sets up your, like your app server, right? But both playbooks essentially need like your base server install. It needs to update all the packages, um, install, you know, these, you know, security, vulnerable uh, security programs and, and everything else. So like you're going to just copy and paste those tasks in, in both playbooks. And it's just a redundant amount of, you know, code that really makes it really hard to like update because say, for example, you need to update it and add another application. And then you're like, well, I need to update it here and here. And then like the more playbooks you have, the more it's going to just scale out, which isn't scalable, right? So roles kind of help out with that in regards to just kind of being one centralized place and then you just reference it in the playbook to use that role. So when you update that role, it will be used every, anywhere that role is referenced. So this video is also sponsored by me, myself and I. So if you enjoy my content or want to sponsor me or send me some free swagger hardware, my email is in the description below. So, okay, let's get started and create some roles, guys. All right, so first off, um, what we'll do here is actually, um, we won't do this in, um, the GitLab web ID because, um, we will actually need Ansible installed to use Ansible Galaxy. Ansible Galaxy is kind of a utility that actually is really nice to actually initialize roles, um, because it'll create like the base default, all the, all the files, all the templates, everything that you need to actually create a role. Um, so what we'll actually do is use our code server here. Um, which is just running Visual Studio Code on the back end. We'll get a bash terminal um, and we will essentially clone the repo down and do all of our work here and then commit back up. So what we'll do here is actually, I don't know if gets are actually installed. So why install get and apple release? Um, don't worry about the, the lag in the text. There's something weird with the code server and my like GUI. I don't know why. It works perfectly fine on my other, on other setup, but for some reason it doesn't show up, but eventually it'll show up. So, um, okay, so now we install get. Um, we'll SSH. Okay, so we we'll actually want to generate a key here. <coughs> Cat ID rsa.pub. And let's grab this key here real quick so that we can use it to clone this repo down. So we'll go to administrator, um, actually here, and actually I don't, I, I, I don't use this GUI as much. Okay, here we go, preferences. Um, SSH key, so we'll add another SSH key, add key. Oh, I expires. Oh, it expires in a year. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So we will change just back down to the root directory. We will go to this. We will clone this repo. Get clone this repo. Yeah, we will outpaste. Boom. Yes. Okay. So now we've cloned the repo down. So we got our Linux admin playbooks repo. So we got, you know, all the things here. So what we'll do here is do a yum y install ansible. Um, so it actually comes from the Apple repo package. So that's why in, um, above you can see, I actually installed the Apple release, um, in addition to get, because if you don't install this, you can't actually download, um, Ansible. So we'll let that install. Um, but while we do that, we will create a like new play, new playbook here. We will name it like setup new server, right? Um, dot yaml, um, which will essentially just be this. Um, but instead of having the task here, we will set up roles and we'll, and, and you can specify multiple roles. So say, say for example, you have this role, um, role one, you can set up another role, role two. Um, now you can get even more interesting where like, say you would need to use roles and then you need to create put task in between the roles. You can actually go to task and there is a module called, I think include role, include role Ansible. Yeah. Include role module where you would essentially include the role. So you, you do like this in here 
do, do. And then you would do, you know, your other module, and then you can include another role below it. Um, so that, that way, if you have to like do things in between roles, you can. Um, but if you only have roles, you can just do what we have here, like role one, role two. Um, but we'll actually name this like system, um, system update um, as, as the role, uh, because that makes the most sense, right? So um, right here. So now that we have Ansible installed, we can go to our Ansible playbooks. So we'll CD into Ansible playbooks. And then we'll make the directory roles. Um, so by default, Ansible will actually look in, if, if there's a roles directory, it will actually look into that, right? So then we'll CD into roles. And then what we'll do is Ansible Galaxy um, in it, and then the name of the role that you want. So in this case, we will call it system underscore update. So now it will actually create the roles in here. So in roles, there's a system update role and it'll create all these like default templates that we'll use. For the most part, you don't need to really worry about pretty much any of them. We'll only focus on the task, but in case you ever need to use any of them, they're all there. So for the task, we're gonna do the same thing that we do for the patch essentially, right? We'll grab this task over here. We'll paste it over here and we will do that. So now, essentially, what happens in this role is essentially when this role gets kicked off um, from the setup new server, it will run this in here and do essentially what we did in the patch. But the nice thing is now, if you want to say, hey, you know, set up app service, set up web tier, set up something else, right? You can just reference the role and it will run that role. Um, so it's nice to kind of keep code. So if you ever need to update system update to be like, say for example, hey, I want to now reboot when it updates, you don't have to copy and paste the, the reboot code and you know source control throughout all you know your patch one and then you set up your new server, you set up whatever, whatever. So um, this makes it super easy. So now that we have that, get status. We will um, change directory. Get add dot, get commit message, add new role, and then we'll push that. Okay, so now we can see here in the, our answer playbooks, we can see that there was a new commit. It will say synced just now and we can see the pipeline. So it validated and deployed. So if we went to our AWX instance and logged in, we should now see that this project has synced um, recently. Actually, we can just go to jobs. You can see that it's synced this morning um, and the role should be there. So what we'll do, and, and it's the exact same thing. We'll create set up new server um, select the inventory home lab, select the project GitLab, and select the playbook to be set up new server. We'll pick our root credentials. We'll define the host name variable and prompt on launch and then save. And then we'll hit launch and then we'll do it on our next cloud instance here. So essentially we did like the exact same thing using our patched dot yaml um, but in this case we just now are using our new file um, which we have as our setup new server but essentially it does the exact same thing because in our role it does the yum update right um, which is great so we should be able to see this when it when it outputs Boop, logged in and gather some facts and it will do a system update. But since we updated it last night, it will actually just say, okay, because nothing's changed, no new updates needed. So, but makes it easy if you wanted to say, hey, I wanted to add something else in here. This role just applies here. So you don't need new code here. It just says, hey, what's ever in this role. So whenever the role gets updated, it will use that. So this is a very nice use case when you have things that you would know that you'll always do consistently, or like you need software that installed, such as like your antivirus or something that needs to be installed on every single machine. And you know, you need to update your antivirus, you know, playbook uh, every like, you know, like three months to make sure that you got like newest package or whatnot. This is a great way to kind of keep it in line so that whenever you need to update it, you update it in one place and all the playbooks that you need to use it is ready. So 
that's pretty much it. That's how I essentially use roles. So hopefully you learned something and enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.